before the empty tomb and glorious resurrection, before the scandal of the cross, before Palm Sunday, the calling of disciples and all the wonders of his ministry. Jesus traveled first to the wilderness, to the solitude and desolation of rock and sand, a king above kings experiencing the hunger and destitution of man. And when the time came for temptation, despite 40 days of deprivation, the Lion of Judah stood firm, confounding every attack with the power of his perfection. In this season of Lent, we share in his sacrifice, not to experience anguish or to portray a counterfeit righteousness, but to draw closer to his holy presence. We withdraw from our distractions. We cast aside treasures and possessions, forsaking all that would separate us from his love. In this desert, he is the source of what sustains us, the joy in our surrender, the peace that surpasses all understanding. He is our hope. invite the light of the Christ to lift us from the dust of death, that we may have both the courage of faith, our shortcomings, and the strength to nurture our gifts and talents in the service of the world. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy is yours forever. Please arise if you are able. I invite you the opening prayer. Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, creator of all living things, the beginning and the end of our lives, we gather as your people, ready to begin our lengthy journey. Strengthen our hearts and minds through your bountiful love. Make us ready to acknowledge our sins and weaknesses. Remove our hearts of stone and create in us hearts and minds ready to hear your words of forgiveness and acceptance. This we ask in the name of the one who walked the way of the cross, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now we are going to sing him, Take Time to Be Holy, verses 1 and 2. <laughs> Thank you. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Today's scripture comes from Psalm 51 verses 1 through 17. For the choir director, a psalm of David regarding the time Nathan the prophet came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone I have sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken or repentant heart, O God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
loving God, now is the time we hear your message. Please use me as a means of delivering your holy word. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Ash Wednesday is the invitation of a preparation into our Lenten journey. It's a time for the reflection on all of the ways that we prepare for the journey or prepare for an important change in our lives. It's a time to prepare us for repentance. This is a time to identify the ways that we have turned away from God to repent of those ways and return. It's also a time to remind us that our confession and repentance is grounded in God's love and mercy. It's time for reconciliation between God and us. Psalm 51, Justin read for us, is called the Psalm of David. After David had committed adultery with Bathsheba, the prophet Nathan came to him to confront him of his sin. David tried to hide his sin, so he killed Uriah, who was his faithful soldier and Bathsheba's husband. He thought nobody knew of his sin, but God knew it. And God sent to the prophet Nathan to tell him he needed to repent because the sin separated David from God. David prayed to God to have mercy on him, forgive his sin, and cleanse his heart. Here is what he prayed. God, be merciful to me because of your faithful love, because of your great compassion. Erase all the wrongs I have done. Scrub away my guilt. Wash me clean from my sin. I know I have done wrong. I remember that sin all the time. I did what you said is wrong. You are the one I have sinned against. I say this so that people will know that I am wrong and you are right. When you decide it's fair, I was going to do wrong, a sin before I left my mother's womb. You want me to be complete lawyer, so put true wisdom deep inside of me. Remove my sin and make me pure. Wash me until I am withered and snow. This chair represents the David's prayer of repentance. It represents David's confession and his heart for God. He wanted to reconcile with God and to have a deep relationship with God again. David knew God's love was unfailing and God's forgiveness was waiting for him. What do you need to repent? You may think you do not sin against God like David, but if we are doing the wrong thing, that is a sin, and it's against God, it does not matter how small or big the sin is in God's sight. We are all sinners. As David confessed it, we are born sinners. Every day we sin against God with our mouth, our eyes and our thoughts, and of course our actions. But as this case of David, God is waiting for us to turn our hearts toward God. 
with our confession. When we confess our sins, we are forgiven and can reconcile with God through Jesus Christ who paid for our sins. I hope this chair reminds you like David to come before God. I would, I would like to ask you to set up one chair or a couch at your home for your time with God. Why don't you practice sitting and giving your heart to God with land? You may start with a small talk with God. You may just listen and have a quiet time with God. You may read the Bible, any devotional book or any Christian book. You may talk with God about any painful experiences, any annoying experiences, or your broken heart. God wants to have a deep relationship with us. God wants to give us God's love. Dear brothers and sisters, Lent is a time to look deep into our souls. It's time to be open and honest, not to continue to hide our sins from ourselves and from God. If we are willing to make the daily prayer our prayers, it's our confessions for our transgressions and our sins. But we also recognize that is not only with God's help, we will be washed clean. This will be important as we proceed on our Lenten journey. It's a journey in with and to God. It's not a time to depend only on our ability and ourselves. We cannot put a new and right path in ourselves. It's through God's actions, not ours, that we are given new heart and new lives. An essential part of our journey is to recognize and admit our limitation. Our 40 days of journey during the Lent starts today. I pray that all of us experience becoming closer to God and God's mercy, grace and love and hope during this time of Lent. Thanks be to God. Dear brothers and sisters, with great devotion, the day of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converse to the faith or prepare for holy, ba holy baptism. It was also a time when person who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the, commu the community of faith were reconciled by repentance and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation in the life of church In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy land by self-examination and repentance by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our moral
total nature. Let us now bow before our Creator and Redeemer. So let us time, uh, let us take a moment in silent prayer. Now I invite you the prayer of the thanksgiving over the ashes. Let us pray together. Oh my God, you have created us of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our morality and repentance, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Those who are watching this service at home, please hold the app Ash Cross in your hands and say, remember that your dust and to dust you shall return. Then leave it on your favorite table.
Now I invite you to pray. Let us pray together. May these ashes that will mark our foreheads be our sign, not only of our confession, but also as marks of God's love and forgiveness. Out of the dirt of the earth, our God holds us, fashioned us, and breathed into us a new life. Let us remember that we have a God who forgives us our sins and forgets our failings. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Now please arise if you are able, for him, O Master, let me walk with thee, verses 1 and 2. Father of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 